you add something to both sides, you could accomplish that same thing by instead of adding 3 squared to both sides, you add 3 squared and subtract 3 squared at the same time to uh, not change the one side of this equation. All right, so those are both ways to complete the square on this. And next up, we are going to get into graphs. Let's see, so we finished circles. Now, I did want to give you a quiz today, uh, but I didn't want to actually handle your quiz. So I think tomorrow would be a good day to give you a quiz on the same material. So we just finished circles. So everything up through, including lines of circles, uh, would be a good topic for your quiz tomorrow. And of course, intercepts, symmetry, all that fun stuff. And everything we do is uh, cumulative. So we're going to look at x and y intercepts from now until the last day of the quarter. So what I've taught you before could always come up again and again. Symmetry, same thing. We'll always look at symmetry. And now we're going to look at uh, functions and function notation. So we're into 1.3. Now I did explicitly tell you we're going to most likely have a quiz tomorrow. But generally, when I finish a section, which we just finished that last section, 1.2. Uh, two days later would be a good day for your quiz. So normally it would have been today to give you your quiz on 1.2, but I'm going to give your quiz tomorrow instead. There we are. So we're going to talk about functions in this section. And the best way to think about a function, you have some inputs. And some outputs. All the functions you've seen, these are always going to be some numbers. And a function tells you how to go from one set to the other set. And we like to draw sets as um, just blobs, or I don't necessarily want to think of them as circles, but they're just a bunch of numbers grouped together. Uh, the Venn diagrams, you were used to using blobs or circles for sets. So one way to think about it, it's a map of how to go from some input over here to some output. So f takes x in. Now, we call, you could call this the inputs, but the better name for this is domain of f. And of course, that's a way too much to write. So what we're going to usually abbreviate is, is dom for domain and then f. So that will be domain of f. So f takes, what is this little symbol right there in front of the word input? Isn't that all? No, 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 that's a sum. So it's an epsilon, and it means all elements from the input. So that little symbol right there, it is a little epsilon, but it means all elements Another way to think about this, if you want, if you like to personify things, which I do, I like to think of it as elements that live in. So elements that live in the input, the input set. And another fun way to think about functions, I like to think about them as creatures who eat things in the input, and what we call output of creatures, that'll be what, where they poo over there. So the e on one side, discrete on the other. All right, so that's another way to think about functions. They're very regular creatures because for each input, you get output right away. All right, maybe your dog's like that. You're going to take him outside as soon as he's done eating. Uh, so that's the way functions work. One input goes right to one output. What is the dot right before the x and the f of x? Oh, that just represents an element in there. So that's just 
x is represented by just that little dot inside the set. Okay. So that's like the label is x, and the actual um, dot itself is the element. Oh. All right, so that's one, thing, one way to think about functions. There's one function rule. And actually, because there's one, I'm going to call this the function rule. Does so anybody know the rule for something to be considered a function versus not a function? So for each input has an output. And that's the one function rule. So each x in domain of f has an output, and I'll write it as, a lot of times you're going to see a letter Y used for the outputs, and this output is going to live in the set of outputs, which we call the range. So each input has an output. That's the one function rule. Functions are also sometimes called maps. And maps generally tell you how to go from one place to another. So in this case, it'll tell you how to go from everything inside the input set, each of those over to the output set. My head in the way of the bottom of the screen for some people. Not too bad. There we go. <laughs> so we can represent a function in different ways. One of them is to just draw a little picture where an arrow goes from one set to another set. Uh, other ways to represent functions. So they could be ordered pairs, a list of ordered pairs. And if you list ordered pairs, you're going to put them in set builder notation. So we can list out points. The first point would be x1, f of x1, and then x2, f of x2. And as many points as you need to represent your function could be an infinite number of points. Of course, you're never going to write out infinite number of points. You never get to the end of that list. So that's really only good if there's a finite number of points. Equation. So that's one way to represent. Another way is an equation. Um, and this equation needs, you need to be able to solve for y. So we usually see them written as y equals f of x. Now, I'll show you um, later on why if we can't solve for y, we do not have a function. Another way to represent is a graph. So a graph of the points that passes the vertical line test. So those are the three main ways we're going to represent functions. So our first example, we'll decide function or not function, and why. And I'll write it in set notation. We're going to 
to look at just points. One, four, two, five, three, six, four, five. So there's four points in here. There's only one rule to be a function. And if we scroll up each input, let's see, each x in the domain or each input has an output. So how many inputs are there in our function? There's four inputs. There are the numbers one, two, three, and four. Does each input have an output? Yep. Now there is something a little bit concerning, and I'll circle it. But let's think about our rule. So the input two has the output five. The input four has the output five. Each input has an output. So this does not break the function rule right here. So this is a function. And our next example, start out the same, one, four, two, five, one, two, three, three. Function or not a function? So before we answer that question, how many actual inputs are there? Be really careful. It looks like there's four. Three. There's really three inputs. One of the inputs is special. What can we say about the input one? That's two outputs. Two outputs. So that breaks the function rule right there. So the input one does not have an output. It has two outputs. So I'm actually going to circle that in orange. So those two ones are the problem. So one has two has multiple outputs. Thus, we do not have a function. So there's a function, or not a function example in point notation, and then a function example point notation and we can see what violates being a function. So we're going to look at another example where we get the uh, potential function written as an equation. Does this equation represent a function? So I'm going to rewrite it in a different, slightly different way. And this should seem really, really familiar to what we just finished last class. What does this represent, this equation? So if I graph this out, what shape would I see? I see a circle. And this circle is pretty easy. What's the center? Zero, zero, so it's right in the middle if I graphed it out quickly. And what's the radius? One. So we're really looking at radius squared, but this radius right here, square root of one, is one. So the circle 